Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but we're going to talk about independent journalism and we're going to talk about YouTube. And we're going to talk about some, some strange things going on in the last month or two on YouTube. And I think it's all kind of related. Uh, if you're a blog owner, if you're a site owner, you may have noticed that your traffic took a massive hit this month. This is because Google has uh, rolled out a new algorithm change, a major, major algorithm change that they say on the surface is designed to eliminate spammy websites and get rid of potentially AI generated content. What could actually be happening in my personal opinion, and uh, Geeky and I've been talking a lot about this lately, is that Google is making deals currently with larger organizations, you know, like Reddit and, um, you know, some of the, the bigger companies, uh, the New York Times, you know, mainstream media outlets, and that they are actually punishing independent voices. Why would they be doing this? Well, uh, it's an election year. <laughs> you know, this is a theory. This is, again, I, I can't prove it. It just, it feels like there are a lot of changes uh, arbitrary changes coming to Google to control the narrative, uh, to control the flow of information. And again, they'll say it's because it's for your own good. They're trying to make sure that uh, you're not getting uh, shown spammy AI content or whatever. And that could be the case. But then the weird thing about that, right, that's what they're claiming is that Google themselves is using more and more AI tools now in, in YouTube. So I'm not sure what's actually going on, but I have a pretty strong suspicion this is about basically choking out independent journalists and choking out uh, dissenting voices just in time for the election. Then I think after November, I think things will probably chill out a little bit. I do, but you know, think about it. They've, uh, you know, certain a certain side of the aisle took a major L uh, last year, the year before, when Elon Musk bought Twitter and turned it into X, which some people think is only a step above 4chan. And there's the possibility that TikTok is going to get sold off too. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, is the, Twitter was ground zero for controlling the media for years. And now that Twitter is effectively gone, uh, you know, and media outlets are scrambling for ad dollars, they're going to try to take out the competition. They don't want you going to some mom and pop blog. They want to make sure that you're visiting only vetted corporate owned websites, right? So we'll talk about this. Uh, it's, it's interesting. And I talked about this somewhat with Peter Pischke, a journalist who's worked for a number of publications. You can actually check out that episode on the DeResed podcast on Spotify. And, uh, you know, we talked about the, the decimation of independent journalism. And this is coming alongside a lot of YouTubers choosing to leave the platform, that things are changing uh, rapidly. And, you know, I, I'm going to be honest, it might not be good news for people like me. That's, that's entirely possible. Then I guess I'll have to learn to code. Oh, 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 wait, I already know how to code. That's where I came from. <laughs> so I'll probably be fine, but no, I'm just saying like, there's definitely something going on. Uh, there are definitely some machinations behind the scenes, I believe to throttle independent voices. And I know people are like, well, go to rumble, go to whatever, go to other websites. They're not as big. They don't have as much reach. It's a Google world. And we, we basically gave Google the power. We did. Everybody uses Google for pretty much everything. Search engine. Uh, we use it for our uh, tools every day, you know, word processors and spreadsheets. And uh, we use it for our entertainment, for video. We use it for logins, for multiple websites. You know, it very much is a Google world. And um, as such, I think we're going to see more and more social media platforms and I think at this point, I don't even think we can consider Google a true search engine. I think it is basically a publisher. I think Google is a publisher now. Um, you know, they publish uh, with YouTube, but I think they also throttle the websites that get seen. 
And I've been comparing notes with other site owners, and it's the same across the board. Now, the common thread isn't even political. The common thread with the other site owners I've talked to is that, that we're independent. Uh, we're not part of some big corporate uh you know, uh, conglomerate uh, like Valnet or something like that. So I think we're going to see some weird stuff happening. And I think you're going to see more and more that the top search results for everything are going to be like the New York Times or CBR or, and I think that sites like, you know, Kotaku and the Mary Sue and those, I think they probably will die off eventually, but I think we're going to be left with whoever is willing to play ball with Google. And it might come down to artificial intelligence. It might be AI because it seems like the companies that are getting promoted are the ones who have talked about potentially cutting deals with Google to let Google scrape their news, to scrape their archives, you know, scrape the New York Times, scrape the Washington Post, the LA Times. And a lot of publishers are going to take that check. They're going to be like, well, there's no future in running a blog. So if Google is going to give us a couple million dollars to basically cash out and let them scrape our content, then they'll, they'll do it. Um, so let's talk about this a little bit more before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys. No woohoos. This is a very serious moment, but, uh, it actually is, you know, for all we dunk on websites like Deadspin and Kotaku and stuff getting shut down. The truth is, is that when they get gone and there are a lot of garbage sites out there that, you know, should and will get gone. Uh, it also takes some independent voices off of the board. And, you know, we do cheer this on in a lot of cases. We're like, yeah, hey, we, Deadspin's gone. You know, I think pretty soon Kotaku's going to be gone and then Mary Sue's going to be gone. But then where is that going to leave us? Oh, CNN, The New York Times, and, uh, you know, MSN, MSNBC, uh, whoever is vetted. Uh, because I'm seeing more and more that's hard to find uh, in any independent news, especially in the pop culture space, if it's not part of like geo media or something like that, like you're not, you're not seeing it so much. Um, and I don't know what the solution is. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying uh, this, this is all happening at the same time. And the timing is curious given what year it is and their excuses don't hold water. So I guess what we'll do is go out to this, uh, Google March, 2024 core update, reducing unhelpful content by 40%. Yeah. A lot of blogs are decimated this month. Um, and we run multiple websites and we've, we've seen the hit as well. Uh, and again, I've been comparing notes. Everybody's getting hit. Um, and I think it's all about controlling the flow of information. They're going to say it's about AI, but I'm going to tell you it's not about AI because, you know, they're, they're using AI tools at Google. Uh, Google's extensive March 2024 core update tackles low quality content and introduces new spam policies targeting manipulative practices. This is coming from Search Engine Journal. Uh, the update aims to reduce low quality, unoriginal content and search results by 40%. So that would mean if you're picking up a story from someplace else or you're, um, I'm sorry, uh, comics beat, if you're regurgitating a press release, yeah, you know, you're not going to get seen as much new spam policies, target scaled content abuse, site reputation abuse and expired domain abuse. Wow. Uh, Google has announced a significant update to its search engine algorithms and policies to tackle spammy and low quality content. Again, I think it's, it's, I think there's more going on. I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. I think this is the official explanation, but I think that this is actually about, uh, controlling the flow of information going into November. One of the main focuses of the March, 2024 core update is to enhance Google's ranking systems. We're making algorithmic enhancements to our core ranking systems to ensure we surface the most helpful information on the web and reduce unoriginal content in search results, said Elizabeth Tucker, director of product for search at Google. The company has been working on reducing unhelpful and unoriginal content since 2022, and the March 2024 update builds on those efforts. 2022 is when a lot of websites started to see a massive decline in traffic. Uh, not all sites, but some. And the common thread, again, I don't even think it was political. I think it was partly political. I think they would they would classify that as being a spammy site. But 
I think it was about taking out independent voices and only promoting mainstream media. And Google has done this before on YouTube. They, they make sure that, you know, uh, SNL and, and Jimmy Kimmel and all these guys, you know, if you're looking for news, you're going to see CNBC first. You're going to see, you know, uh, pretty much everybody except the independent commentators that, that you're probably on YouTube to listen to, right? The refined ranking systems will better understand if web pages could be more helpful, have a better user experience, or seem to be created primarily for search engines rather than people. The irony in this is they're probably going to use AI to determine if a human created the content. Google expects that combining this update and its previous efforts will collectively reduce low quality, unoriginal content and search results by 40%. Now, I do think there's a lot of spam out there. I think there's a lot of clickbait. But again, I don't know if this is actually the reason that they're doing it. Um, in addition to the ranking adjustments, Google is updating its spam policies to remove the lowest quality content from search results. We'll take action on more types of manipulative behavior starting today. While our ranking systems keep many types of low quality content from ranking highly on search, these updates allow us to take more targeted action under our spam policies. Like Facebook and like other social media platforms, Google is now, a, I believe, a publisher. Um, and look, we have a pretty good relationship with them when it comes to, uh, YouTube, but if you're outside of their ecosystem, you're on your own, man. Like if you have a website that's, it's not playing ball with Google, you're on your own, man. That's all I'm saying. Uh, scaled content abuse. They're strengthening its policy against using automation to generate low quality or unoriginal content at scale to manipulate search rankings. Now, this is basically uh, content mills. And so it might actually hurt. It might actually hurt sites like comic book resources. But they're like, if you're going to do a lot of low quality uh, AI content, you know, articles are obviously AI. We're not going to we're not going to rank them. The update policy will focus on the abusive behavior, producing content at scale to boost search ranking, regardless of whether automation, humans, or a combination of both are involved. So yeah, if you're if you're a content mill, you're you're going to get dinged. This will allow us to take action on more types of content with little to no value created at scale, like pages that pretend to have answers to popular searches but fail to deliver helpful content. Again, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, they are using AI to determine this. Uh, site reputation abuse, for example, a third party might publish payday loan reviews on a trusted educational website to gain ranking benefits from the site. This is what we talked about with um, with uh, Deadspin and that that company buying Deadspin. Um, and it's interesting because I actually read uh, I read an interview with one of the editors of Deadspin, and they said that their company basically was was chasing search engine clout, and they were chasing the algorithm. And it all just ended. So when, you know, we had the, uh, you know, controversy with the uh, nine-year-old that they said was wearing blackface at that Kansas City Chiefs game, you know, that was just kind of like the kiss of death. And I, I imagine this is going to happen with a lot of other sites too. But again, I think I, I personally, and I can't, I can't prove it, but I personally feel that there is something else going on here. And I do think it's about uh, making sure that independent voices don't overtake authoritative mainstream media voices because the mainstream media is terrified of YouTubers, of podcasters, of Substack bloggers, of people with a substantial Twitter following. They're terrified. So they're going to try to control what they can control. They can't control Twitter anymore. They lost that to Elon Musk. Now, Chud's got a hold of it, but they can they can work with Google to control Google News and, you know, uh, Discover and sites that pop up in Discover. And, uh, you know, they can make sure that Google weighs other sites more heavily. But it's interesting because they're like, oh, yeah, we're not going to we're not going to reward AI content as they roll out tons of AI features last fall. Uh, backgrounds and stuff. And they, they just unlo they just uh, uh, unveiled a whole bunch of new features for creators on the back end, you know, using AI. And they're using AI to determine, you know, like if your thumbnails are getting enough click through and all that, that stuff. And I guarantee you they're using AI to determine uh, who to show your videos to. 
And if you've noticed some weirdness going on with your YouTube channel, that people aren't coming back like they used to, um, you know, and you're still producing quality content. I want to, I want to be clear. You haven't pivoted too much and you haven't just, you know, told your audience to go fuck themselves. Pardon my French. You know what I'm saying? Um, then there's probably something going on there. Now, this is interesting, and I actually have to give a hat tip. I saw the quartering covered this, uh, which got me thinking because I've been thinking a lot about websites and news and all this stuff going on. Um, you know, this is kind of what I do. This is what I did before I did YouTube. So I'm looking at all this. And uh, the Business Insider is saying the great YouTube exodus is coming, leaving AI junk and Mr. Beast to reign supreme. And uh, they're talking about how, you know, game theorist uh, Matt Pat sold his channel and he's saying goodbye. And we talked about this too. You know, a lot of YouTubers have been doing this for a long time are saying goodbye. Maybe they're seeing the writing on the wall. You know, we know that YouTube, and we talked about this in a previous video, they're actually cutting back on the number of uh, handlers that they're giving to content creators. So that is that is concerning because it tells me that they're not really planning on working with a lot of content creators. This article basically says the reason a lot of YouTubers are leaving is because it's getting harder to get found because of the algorithm changes. And also there is a glut of AI content. So, you know, if, if Google is going to apply this to websites, why are they not applying it to YouTube, which is their own product? Again, I think there's something else going on. So this article says, uh, I think this is the year there's going to be a lot more of these. Um, Matt Pat said of his own farewell video, I think the dam is going to burst in a lot of ways. They're talking about how YouTubers have retired for years, Jenna Marbles and Tyler Oakley and Tanya Burr. Um, some of them are still around, but they've scaled back the, the amount of content they're making, like Lily Singh and Corpse Husband. And they said the current wave of departure uh, departures feels different. It may be the tipping point for a whole new era of YouTube. One where Mr. Beast reigns supreme and smaller creators struggle to compete for views against his extremely expensive cinematic stunts and where AI generated content thrives. Again, if this is about purging AI, truly about purging AI, low quality content, then Google needs to get its own house in order. But that's again, not what's going on, right? That's not what's going on. It's unclear just how quickly AI generated content has grown on YouTube, but one recent investigation by Wired found some channels with content that appear to be targeting children. Oh God, here we go again. In September of last year, the BBC found children's YouTube channels that were labeling AI generated false scientific information as educational content. The problem is already so widespread that YouTube is bringing in new politics to a new politics to address the issue. In October, for example, the platform set would require creators to disclose that they had used AI technology in their video. I don't think people are going to do that. You know, if it's believable, but what's going to happen is we're going to have, uh, you know, you look at the technology with Sora and you're going to have videos that are created whole cloth. Like I can see a future. And I talked about this, um, in that, that podcast with Peter Pischke, which is why I'm bringing it up. And I'm also trying to push you over to podcasts because just in case YouTube goes uh, tits up, as they say, check out our podcast. We also have an audio version of Clownfish TV out there as well on Spotify. But no, I talked about this. I said, what if in a couple of years, you know, Google answers questions with videos. Somebody asks a question, it fires up the AI and it actually generates an entire video like, oh, you want to know about, I think the, the example I used was the gold rush. You want to know about the gold rush? Well, we'll just spin up an entire video telling you about the history of the gold rush and, you know, uh, compositing, uh, you know, historical uh, photographs. And then we'll, we'll turn those photographs into video footage using something like Sora. And I think that's coming that at some point, uh, YouTube is not going to have a lot of use. I think it's going to be uh, kind of a la carte. I think it's going to publish content. Then Google, they can keep all the money, right? They have the, the biggest search engine on the planet. And if they're answering the most commonly asked questions with videos, they're creating whole cloth from AI and they're promoting those videos to the top of the search results. They don't have to split any of that money with creators. And that is a very real possibility. And it's, it's concerning. 
You know, it is. This is kind of like Facebook. You know, they wanted you to stay on Facebook. They don't want you leaving. Facebook did not like being a content aggregator. That's what they were. And that actually led to the demise of a lot of these websites. People would post links to their articles on Facebook and then people would leave Facebook, go to that website, and then they might not go back to Facebook for a while. Facebook wants you there. Google wants you there. They want you on Google, you know, and uh, it's going to be harder, I think, for content creators. It's going to be harder for independent voices. You know, I think this is kind of the uh, scary scenario that, that you know, that we've relied too heavily on basically, it, you know, Google being the the backbone of the Internet. And because of that, because there really are no viable alternatives, I mean, everybody's trying to start competing video sites and they're trying to start competing search engines, but it very much is a Google world. You're pretty much, if you're a content creator online or you're a journalist or you're whatever, podcaster, whatever it is, uh, you know, you're selling online or whatever, you are at the mercy of Google and maybe Facebook. And you know what I'm saying? So they said, uh, experts believe if the trend continues, it may usher in a future where relatable and authentic friends people used to turn to on the platform to watch are fewer and far between. Instead, replaced by a mixture of exceedingly high-end videos, only the Mr. Beasts of the Internet can reach and subpar AI junk thrown together by bots and designed to meet our consumption habits with the least effort possible. So basically, mid-tier Mid-tier YouTubers get obliterated. Um, I did not realize. I thought Matt Pat was stepping away. I did not realize that they sold the whole company. He sold to a startup. Like, damn. He just he's just like he's just like noping out. Um, yeah, a lot of people leaving YouTube. Uh, people were talking about how it's hard now. They said, despite being generally considered the top social media platform for creator compensation, YouTube has struggled in the past with combating hate speech. Uh-oh. And conspiracy theories, making its copyright claim system fair and consistent and how to balance free speech with being advertiser friendly. Um, they said that it actually right now, uh, if you are doing longer form stuff, if you're doing... Um, podcasts and commentary videos, kind of like our channel that you, you've got a little bit more time, but they said, yeah, they said they've been chasing TikTok short videos. And that is true. They, they definitely do, uh, favor channels that upload shorts, even if the shorts don't pay. That's what's so frustrating about it. They're like, Hey, make shorts. Okay. Hey, look, my short got, you know, 500,000 views. Cool. Here's, here's 50 cents. You know, that's basically how it works. They said even longstanding creators with large followings don't feel like the work they're putting into their channels are paying off, leading them to pivot or give up. Uh, and they said a lot of the OG YouTubers are just aging out of it, right? Now, I think, uh, again, it's not all doom and gloom. I'm just saying it's harder now. I think we got in at the tail end of when it, it was uh, viable to... Uh, you know, actually make some money at YouTube. I, I think a lot. I think if you start now, I think it's going to be very, very hard. I'm going to be honest. And I think it's going to get a lot harder. It's going to be a lot harder to make any content online anywhere. Again, we're at the mercy of Google at this point. So like, I, I don't know where it's going to go, but I think all these things are uh, definitely related. You know, and I think that this, again, I don't believe that this, this update is about getting rid of spam because they're allowing it on their platform. Uh, I think there's something else going on and it could be, it could be that like after November, everything just kind of magically course corrects. But for the time being, I'm telling you, it's going to be harder to find uh, independent voices through Google. I don't think they're going to promote them and uh, you're going to have to look elsewhere. Now, do I think Twitter or rumble or, you know, any of those places are truly the answer? I don't know. I, I really don't have a clue where things are going. I think if, if everybody knew where things were going, they would be doing them, right? Uh, I just think it's going to be a lot harder uh, to find the truth. It's going to be a lot harder to find, uh, you know, again, independent journalists, independent news, um, at least until November. We'll see what happens after the election. But I'm going to wrap this one up, guys. Just some food for thought. Food for thought is you're looking for news because I know you guys are news hounds. Uh, and again, 
please, please subscribe to DRezzed on Spotify, uh, iTunes, Amazon, wherever you listen to podcasts. We also have an audio version of Clownfish TV out there. That's kind of our backup. You know, I uh, haven't been doing a whole lot with Rumble because I don't know what's up with Rumble. We used to be able to import our videos. Now we can't do that anymore, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll talk later. <laughs>